um, if you'd like to follow along, please turn to the book of Malachi, chapter 4. It is right before the book of Matthew. It's the last book in the New Testament. Malachi chapter 4. I'm just going to read the first three verses. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings. And ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. And ye shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I shall do this, saith the Lord of hosts. I'm going to stop right there. Uh, I'm going to try and preach today about the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord. Malachi here is not what you might call the most cheerful of the prophets. But he's got some really good stuff in here, Walter. You understand? He starts off in chapter 1, uh, Yet I love Jacob, and I hated who? Esau. Esau. That's chapter 1, verses, and verse 2 and 3. You understand? I look. Just to be sure, in the Hebrew, it says that he hated Esau. It doesn't say that he loved him less. Matter of fact, if you look at it, it says he hated him personally. That's what the word means, as an enemy. You understand, that's what we are without Christ. We're enemies of God. And believe me, folks, you don't want God for an enemy. It never works out for the enemy. It always works out for God. <laughs> but that's how he starts it out. Then he continues on in verse 7 of chapter 1. You offer polluted bread upon my, uh, upon my altar. And you say. You understand? You offer polluted bread. And then you say. What do we do to pollute? What, 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 what? What did we do wrong? We offered polluted bread. How? In this, that ye say, the table of the Lord is contemptible. Ooh. Don't be talking about the Lord's table. I'm not talking about what we're doing here, although I am talking about what we do here. Every couple months. You understand? But here's this. The Lord Jesus Christ is the table. And the Lord Jesus Christ is the showbread that goes up on that table. He's the bread of life. Don't ever say that the bread of the Lord is contemptible. And he went on to tell him worse. He said, and ye offer the blind for sacrifice. That's evil. And that's what he said. Is it not evil? And if ye offer the lame and the sick, is it not what? Evil. You understand? God has his way of offering and sacrifice and worship. God has his way of worship. And you better do it his way. Offer it now unto thy governor. Will he be pleased with thee? He said, give it to your boss. Will he be happy with it? But no, you think you're sneaking something by God. But you're not. You're not. That's the way Malachi starts out. And in some ways it gets worse. But here at the end, oh. Uh, here at the end, well, let's, just for the verse 5 for context. Behold, this is uh, chapter 4, verse 5, excuse me. 
Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before what? The coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. That's the day I want to talk about today. Because that's what Malachi is talking about. That's the context. This is the day of the Lord, which is spoken of all throughout the Old Testament in places. It calls it here a great and dreadful day. In other places, it calls it the great and terrible day. Now, before I get too started, I am not going to prophesy about days or times. You understand? There's a really good reason for that. I don't know. And neither does anyone else. If they say they do, they're lying. Because Jesus Christ said, no man knows the day or the season. But my Father which is above. And guess what? He ain't told nobody anything since. But here's the point. Here's what we hear is what we have about this day of the Lord. You understand? Malachi, Malachi was hard on the Israelites in this, in this book. He was hard on the Jews in this book. With good reason. But all Malachi's doing is doing was telling them what thus saith the Lord. And that's what we have here in chapter 4. Thus saith the Lord about the day. The day of the Lord. And how does it start out? For behold the day cometh that shall burn as an oven. And all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. The day comes, and that day shall burn. I understand it's not the most pleasant subject to start off with on Sunday morning, but this is what we have. But he tells you who. Who is going to burn? Because this is people that Malachi is talking about. What did it say? The day that cometh shall burn them up. That's what it says. But who is it? Well, the description we have is twofold. All the proud... And all that do wickedly. Now that seem, might seem like a strange combination. But you understand the Lord put them in the same category. Pride. Pride. Proud is in the same category as them that do wickedly. You understand? Some people take great pride in their pride. God says you've got nothing to be proud of. Anything you have, he gave to you. Anything you know, he's taught you. Anything we have of any value whatsoever is a gift of the Lord. He causes the rain to fall on the just and the unjust alike. He causes the crops to grow for the just and the unjust alike. Mm, there's an old movie. I don't know, was it Shenandoah, Jimmy Stewart, praying before he eat dinner, Walter? Oh, we thank you, Lord. We worked the field, we plowed it, we planted it, we've tended it, we've grown it, and we've harvested it, but we thank you for it. You know what that is? That's pride. That's pride, folks. Now, is there anything wrong with farming? Well, yeah, sometimes. <laughs> uh, what is it? What is it? A high look, a proud look, and the plowing of the wicked is sin. Proverbs 6 puts it this way. I don't have a mark. Yeah. Proverbs 6 and verse 16. These six things 
Does the Lord, what's the word? Hate. Hate. No, wait a minute. That's not enough. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. Guess where that list starts? A proud look. A lying tongue. Hands that shed innocent blood. A heart that devises wicked imaginations. Feet that be swift in running to mischief. A false witness that speaketh lies. And here's one. He that soweth discord among the brethren. You understand? Here's where... Solomon, in all his wisdom, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, wrote down here, he put a proud look in the same category with what? Those that do wickedly. You can be the most upstanding citizen in the world and be full of pride about it. And God won't have you. Because here's the thing. You understand those that the Lord Jesus Christ saves, he humbles. He'll knock the pride right out of you. He will kick your props out from underneath you. However, whatever metaphor you want to use, he'll put you in the dirt because in the dirt is where we belong. You understand? I'm no better. This is where I was. I thought it was a, fe a fine fella. I found out differently. Oh, but this, you know, oh, when that thing where Paul wrote that one thing, such were some of you. Such were some of you. What the Lord hates, he's going to burn up. Wait a minute, you said that was people. Yeah, I did. You know why? Because what? that's what Malachi said. He shall burn them up in this day. Uh, you understand? Here, I'll give you one. Another Malachi, chapter 2. Verse 17. I read this and it's like, oh my goodness. Malachi chapter 2, verse 17. Ye have wearied the Lord, how? With your words. Yet ye say, wherein have we wearied him? Well, you've wearied him when ye say, everyone that doeth evil is good in the sight of the Lord. And he delighteth in them. Or, where is the God of judgment? I still get tickled thinking, uh, was, I think it was Bruce Crabtree said. He said, well, he says, somebody told him, said something about the fact of, well, maybe God will strike me dead. And Bruce told him, yeah, he will. Said, Don't get in a hurry. <laughs> he will. You understand? I am the Lord. I will recompense. It may look like a lot of people are getting away with a lot of things in this life. And from our perspective, they are. But trust me, there will be an accounting. And I'm not the accountant you have to worry about. It's God. You understand? There are people out there right now this morning saying... That those who do evil, and they're saying they're good. You mean God cares what we say? Yes, he does. As a matter of fact, he cares more than the world knows. You want one? I'll give you one for free. Have you ever heard this? There's a divine spark in every man. You just got to fan it into flames. You're calling those that do evil to be good. And you're wearying God when you're saying that. You're wearying God. Oh, the, the, newer, the newer version of that is this. God is in all men. 
You just have to let him out. Talk about proud. Talk about pride. God is in you. God is in every one of us. Funny, God doesn't seem to say that in his book. Or smile, God loves you. They weary God with what they say. Because, you understand, all that God has said in his word, all that all his men have preached over the centuries, all of that, and this is what they come up with. Smile, God loves you. They weary God with what they say. And this is the thing. What Malachi has told us. Thus saith the Lord. They shall be burnt up. And what is it? Not only just burnt. He says burnt up. Root and branch. You understand? What's left when the root's gone and the branches are gone? There ain't nothing left. And they're going to be burned up with those that do wickedly. But here's the next thing about this very same day of the Lord. But. But. You understand? But is a conjunction that puts these two things together. Now they're different. What happened in verse 1 is different than what's going to happen in verse 2. But they're connected. They're connected by the same day. But unto you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings. And ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. This is a continuation of the previous verse. Again, let me say it. This is not a different day. It's the same day. Because here's the thing, there's only one day of the Lord. That's all there is. The day. But unto you that fear my name. Now I want to know who that is. Well, I can tell you who that is. Unto you that believe that he is precious. Hmm. Unto you to whom the Son of God, S-O-N of God, has been revealed. Unto you who believe that Jesus is the Christ. Those are the ones that fear his name. And nobody else. Nobody else. Because nobody else knows his name. You understand? The Son of Righteousness, and it's S-U-N... The son of righteousness rises with healing in what? His wings. The son of righteousness, S-U-N, is a person. That's what's going to happen on the day of the Lord. The son of righteousness arises. The son of righteousness is a person and those that know him those that fear his name are guess what they are not proud and they don't do wickedly now they're not proud because he's humbled them it's not that pride's not in them but they're not pride proud because he has humbled them he's not going to bring you in until he brings you down and that's the way it works. You understand? The only way before the Father is to bow your knees to Christ. And we're not naturally not going to bow until he brings us down. And trust me, folks, he can do it. His arm is not short that he cannot save. And you understand, if he's got to take that arm out and knock your legs out from underneath you, that's what he'll do. If he's got to send you out for a lifetime, a life of riotous living until you run out of money and you end up slopping the hogs, wishing you could eat what the hogs were eating, he'll do that too. 
He'll do exactly what he needs to do, and he will bring you down before he ever brings you up. But bring you up, he will. You understand, when Christ is bringing you in, he's bringing you up. Mm, I like that. Those that know him, he's humbled them. And they don't do wickedly, not saying they don't have sin, but they don't do wickedly because his spirit is within them. You understand, we don't save ourselves and we don't keep ourselves. They both fear and love the son of righteousness. You know why? They've been waiting for the son of righteousness. He's been promised to come again. He's coming again and it's him we're waiting for. It's him we're looking for. I'm not... I'm not really looking for the day of the Lord, Walter. I, mean, I would like to say that doesn't concern me, but it does. But you understand, that's not what I'm wanting. What I want to do is see my Lord. I want to see, I want to see the son of righteousness. You understand? That's what Job said. In my flesh I shall see God, whom I'm going to see. Even though this body gets killed, dies, Devoured by worms. Just heard it this morning coming in. Yet in my flesh I shall see God whom I shall see and not another. I'm going to see him. That's who we're waiting on. And it says here, But for you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness arise. Arise. The word is irradiates. The word is the sun of righteousness is going to shine. You understand? The sun, of, the sun always shines, Walter. You know, sometimes the earth is turned around the wrong way. We're in the dark, but trust me, the sun's still there shining. The sun always shines. It's just some days we don't see it. And I can tell you this, the blind never do see it. The blind never do see him, the son of righteousness. There's nothing wrong. The son of righteousness is there. He's there right now. But the blind are not going to see him. And if their leaders be blind, and they be blind, guess where they're both going? They're going in the ditch. And you know what they're going to say while they're in the ditch? What do you mean we're in the ditch? <laughs> they, they weary God with what they say. This isn't a ditch. Never mind. Those whose eyes he has opened will see. They'll see. <laughs> he shines all the time. I don't give over. I trust as a believer, I don't always see it. I don't always see him. And not in that way. But he shines all the time whether I'm looking or not. Whether I wake or I sleep. He shines. Mm. Those whose eyes he has opened shall see. And here they have been waiting for him. And now where Malachi is writing here he has come. He has come. And guess what? He is all righteousness. Understand, this is the sun of righteousness. The shining of righteousness. Irradiating his people. The world doesn't understand what that means. 
they don't know this. There is no other righteousness than the son of righteousness. There is none. None. You understand? And that's what Paul was talking about his brethren, the Jews. And the Jews aren't different than any other religious people, okay? You understand? They're going about, going about, going about to establish what? Their own righteousness. And they're wearying God with their words. They're wearying God with their deeds. They're wearying God. And at best, their righteousness is they may have some wonderful deeds, as far as I'm concerned. But the best they are is filthy rags in the sight of God. Yeah. You understand? Compared to the Son of Righteousness, we're nothing. And our righteousnesses are as nothing. We need who? We need the Son of Righteousness. We need his righteousness. And guess what? He is our righteousness. Now if you haven't guessed by now, the son of righteousness is Jesus Christ. He's the son of righteousness. In him should all fullness dwell. And if he is all righteousness, guess what? There is no other righteousness. There's none. Jesus Christ, the righteous. The righteous. But guess what? Don't guess, I'll tell you. He is our righteousness. God has made him to be unto us wisdom and sanctification and what? Righteousness. Wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. The son of righteousness is everything to the believer. You know why? Because God has made him that. Unto us. We didn't accept him, collect him, go get him, or even look for him until he found us. The Lord has made him unto us. And you know what? When he comes in this day, this part with healing in his wings. With healing in his wings. Oh. The Lord God Almighty manifest in the flesh our Lord Jesus Christ the son of righteousness is our healer. It is he that healeth thee. And you know this is the strange thing. He's rising with healing in his wings for those that fear his name on what? The great and dreadful day of the Lord. I said, folks, there's only one day. There's only one day. And you know what? He's covered us with his righteousness. I preached it a few weeks ago, a few months ago. There's only one robe of righteousness. I said there's many garments of salvation, but there's only one robe of righteousness. And that's what he has given to us. The one robe. His righteousness. The son of righteousness. That prodigal son that came home after God put him through all that. What did the father say? Bring forth the best robe. And put it on him. He can't put it on. But God can put it on you. You can't put it on. But God can put it on you. Oh, behold, the day cometh. Those that fear his name are those that are in him. And his people shall see the great day of the Lord. 
And the great day is a day of healing for the people of God. There's healing in his wings. Spiritual healing, yes. Physical healing, guess what? Also yes. Also yes. Paul wrote it in Philippians 3, verse 20 and 21. For our conversation is in heaven, from whence we also, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. You understand? The son of righteousness is arising. He's going to arise with healing in his wings. And this mortal is going to put on immortality. This corruption is going to put on incorruption. And this vile body is going to be changed that it might be fastened fashioned like unto his glorious body. And then what happens? You'll go forth. That's what it says. You'll go forth. And ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. The great and the dreadful day of the Lord is both great and dreadful. Understand, like I said, this is all one day. The day of the Lord is coming. For some, it will be indeed dreadful and terrible. But for those that fear his name, this is a great day. This is a great day. This is a great day. And for some, this day has been greatly desired. The Son of Righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings. Those who fear the Lord, those who know the Lord, those who believe the Son, mm, they shall go forth. They're going to go forward. And what's it say in another place? And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Understand this Bible starts with the light. And guess what? It ends with Jesus Christ is the light. It's, this is the thing, see. It, it, there's only one day of the Lord. This one day. And guess what? The son of righteousness that arises with healing in his wings for us burns up those that are proud and those that do wickedly. Like I said, it's not always the most cheerful message in the world. But if you know him, you know this one thing. Jesus Christ saves sinners. He came to save sinners. And he says, him that comes unto me, I will raise up at the last day. This is the word of the Lord given to Malachi for us. But unto you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall and ye shall tread down the wicked for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I shall do this saith the Lord of hosts. All I can say is this. 
Behold, the day cometh. It's coming. It's coming. Be sure. His judgment slumbereth not. But neither does any of his good promises either. His healing slumbers not also. Our Heavenly Father, we're thankful again for this time and this place. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done for us and are doing. And please come quickly, Lord Jesus. We long to see you. We long to hear your voice. We long for the, the healing of your wings. Mm. Help us, Lord. Be with Walter as he comes to preach your word, your gospel. Give us ears to hear. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.